Hey everybody, uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at setting up a session and importing an AAF uh, so that we can get started with our film project. Um, so you can see I have just a blank Pro Tools session open here. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and uh, grab the AAF file and bring that into the session. So I'm dragging the AAF from my desktop here and I can just drag and drop that anywhere into the session. And that's going to open the import session data dialog. From here, we can see a bunch of information about the AAF. It's called incubate foothill AAF. Uh, it's an AAF file, start time code, uh, time code format, bit depth, sample rate, all that kind of stuff. We're not gonna really mess with much of this stuff. Um, we're gonna look at the media options down here though, and you can see copy from source. I'm gonna have to do that anyway because I'm running a 24-bit session. Um, and so I want to go ahead and make 24-bit copies of the files. So I'm going to copy from source. Then we can just link to the video, which we'll, we'll deal with in a minute. Down here in the tracks area, you can see I have all of the tracks of the AAF. And they just have these generic names because that's the way they came out of Media Composer. Uh, if I hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, you, know, you can change these assignments for the destination um, for all of these tracks. But really, I just want them to be on that new track designation there because I don't have any tracks in my session. So it's going to fly all of these in as new tracks. Down here, you'll see some other options like importing clip gain, volume automation, and some other stuff. We, we don't really need to play with any of this. We can pretty much use the defaults uh, for the entire dialogue, really. Okay. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK on here. And as you'll see, it's going to create all of these tracks that we see in the AAF as tracks in my Pro Tools session. And it's gonna bring in all of the clips that the video editor had when they finished editing the sequence in uh, Media Composer. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna click OK. Okay, so now all the tracks have been created and you can see the process of all of the clips being copied into this local session. All right, and there they are. So we can see all of the tracks that came in from the AAF and all of the clips that the video editor had placed in the sequence that, that, that he was working on. Um, and so we can see an exact um, replica of that sequence from Media Composer here in Pro Tools. I'm going to go ahead and resize these tracks. One of my favorite key commands uh, for fitting tracks onto the screen uh, vertically is Control Option Command on the Mac. So Control Start Alt on Windows and then press the down arrow. Watch what this is going to do for me. All three modifiers. By the way, we call this the claw in the, uh, in the Pro Tools community here. So claw, down arrow, and everything fits on screen beautifully, and I can actually see, again, exactly what the video editor was seeing. All right, so these track names are pretty terrible. Um, we're gonna take advantage of a relatively recent feature in Pro Tools to batch rename these tracks, and I wanna rename these so that they're clearly AAF tracks. So I'm gonna select the first one, hold down Shift, and click on the last one, and then right-click on any track and choose Batch Rename. And this big batch rename dialog is going to come up. I'm really only going to do a couple quick things in here. First, clear existing name. I'm going to disable trim. I'm going to add a prefix of AAF, right? And then I'm going to turn on the numbering, and I'm going to start at 1, but I'm going to do two places. What that's going to do is number 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, um, so that all of the tracks will have a two-digit number. Down here, it's going to separate with the space. You kind of can't see that there's actually a space here in that um, little field, but it's going to separate with the space, which is fine. And that's it. Uh, I'm just going to use those really basic settings and watch what this is going to do for me. Now all my tracks are renamed AAF uh, 1 through 18. That's how many tracks came in from the AAF. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, we can see all of the clips, again, from the video editor. The tracks are named. Very obvious what's what here. And now we're ready to actually lay out the tracks that we're going to use. Um, and we're going to go through these clips as part of our dialogue editing process. That'll be in the next video. And I'm going to show you 
um, that process of going through, selecting the things we want to keep, getting rid of the things that we that we don't want, and then we'll be ready to do a more intensive dialog edit and eventually dialog mix and 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 move on with the rest of the project. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in this video file, um, which is called Incubate Burn. I'm just going to grab that from my desktop and drag and drop it onto this V1 video track that we've already created. Okay, so let's bring that in. And I'm going to get this video import options dialog. Destination, I'm going to say drop track. If you didn't already have that V1 track, you could go to a new track. Um, location, uh, I'm going to, this one can actually go for me to the session start, um, but I'll show you how to spot this in a second. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click session start. We'll see where that aligns. But again, I'll show you. If yours doesn't go in at the right place, we can fix it. I don't need to import the audio from the file, but that is an option that I would have here. Um, but, you know, again, drop track, session start, totally fine. I'm going to hit OK. Movie file comes in. OK. Now, the reason this movie is called Incubate Burn, if we pull up our video window, uh, and that is also Command-9 on the numeric keypad, notice when you see this, um, this uh, circle around the number 9, that's letting you know that this keyboard shortcut only works on the numeric keypad. It doesn't work on the regular QWERTY number 9. Um, so if you don't have the extended full-size keyboard, you're not going to be able to use a key shortcut for this. Not the end of the world, but one of many reasons why you really do want the full-size keyboard with the numeric for working with Pro Tools. Anyway, I'm going to click on this. I'll bring up my video window. And if I click into the movie somewhere, you're going to see that there's a time code burn in on the movie. Okay. And, and you'll see, you're going to see in a second here why this is so useful. So it says one hour, zero minutes, nine seconds, 18 frames. Okay, great. But let's just select the movie and we can see what the first frame of the video is. All right. So here's an example actually. Mine is not matched up with the time code of my session. Okay. If you're not showing time code, by the way, as your main counter, you can click up here and choose time code from that little disclosure triangle. Um, and so if you're not seeing that now, go ahead and do it. You don't want to be looking at bars and beats if you're more of a music production person. You definitely want this on time code. And in fact, I don't even really need that bars and beats sub counter. If you're seeing that, you can turn that off by clicking again there and choosing hide sub counter. Okay, so this is not in the right location, 00595200, but this is at 50. So here's what I'm going to do. I know this needs to go, zero. well, I'm not going to keep saying it. It needs to go to that time code location. So I'm going to right-click on the clip, and I'm going to choose spot. I don't have to go into the spot edit mode to do this. I can just click on here. You can do this with any clip. Choose spot, and the spot dialog is going to pop up, and I'm just going to type in what the real time code value is supposed to be. 00595200. Okay, when I hit OK, note it just nudged it over just a little bit. And now, time code in the movie matches the time code in the main counter. And you can be pretty confident that it's starting in the right place. Jump over to the end of the video, just click somewhere near the end. If that time code still matches, then you can be pretty confident that the frame rate and everything is set correctly. Another way to verify that your frame rate is correct is over here you see this video, video engine rate indicator, 23976. If this is white, then you know that the session's frame rate is set correctly and matches the movie. If this is red, then they don't match. Let me show you what that looks like. So if I go setup session and my session time code rate is 23976. Let's say this was on 2997, okay? then you'll see this video engine rate indicator will turn red. It's showing me the movie's at 23976, right? It actually pulls that out of the movie metadata. But my session's not at the same. Now watch what happens here. The beginning may align on our clip, but if we go down to the end, um, it's off just barely, just barely, but it is slightly off, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Go back to Setup, Session, Again, that's Command-2 on the numeric. If you're on Mac, Control-2 on Windows. And then just simply set this to match the video engine rate indicator over here, 23976. That turns white. And now, again, go to the beginning. Yep, that's, that's good. Go to the end. Yep, that's good. Now you know that um, the movie is aligned perfectly in the session. Okay, so very important to set up. Now, one little trick you can do on a video track that no other track does 
once that movie has been aligned exactly where it needs to go, right click on the name of the track, V1, and you can actually lock the track. No other track in Pro Tools has this feature. So I hit locked and you see a padlock there. It's kind of, the, the graphic is kind of screwed up, which is something Avid needs to fix. But that track is now locked. This movie cannot be moved out of sync. Okay, now check it out. I can do the same thing with these individual clips down here, which is a really good idea. Okay, we are not going to actually edit these AAF tracks. We want these saved for posterity so that we can come back to these later if we knock something out of sync, if we decide we want a different clip out of here, whatever it is, we can come back to it. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna select all these clips, click and drag, and I'm gonna go under the clip menu I can choose edit lock. It's also one of the easier Pro Tools commands. Command L on Mac, Control L on Windows. Hit that, and now you see all these individual clips have little padlocks, and they are locked in place, and they also uh, cannot be moved. Well, you can move them, but then this dialog pops up, and it says, this command will affect one or more locked clips. So then you remember, oh, I, I don't wanna do that. So you can hit cancel and not accidentally move these clips out of sync. Again, remember, these came from the video editor. They're perfectly locked in timecode to the video clip. We do not want to move these clips out of sync. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to go. Um, we've got the movie, we've got the audio clips, we've got them laid out on the tracks, and we're seeing exactly what the video editor saw um, when they finished the sequence right before they exported it to the AAF and sent it to us. Now, you want to do a little bit of verification uh, to make sure everything's playing and, you know, and whatnot. So I'm going to bring that video window back up. Okay. I'm going to go to the beginning of the movie. I can just select it to do that. And I'm going to play through just a little bit of it here, and we'll just make sure that everything is working properly. And here we go. Okay, I'll, I'll jump ahead a little bit to where there's actually some dialogue. Please. No, you don't have to do this. Please. I need to go. Just let me go. She gets a phone call from Mima. Message 10 years into the future. Now you kiss my future great grand. Okay, and then I'll jump toward the end here. Incubate, the time delayed messaging app. Send video, photos. And okay, so everything's looking good and we are ready to move on and actually start editing this dialogue. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.